guys um, short video how to finance your vehicle um, so I, I, I did a lot of thinking on that um, how to buy this Lamborghini um, price 70 80,000 euro I actually ended up paying 70,000 euro but I was thinking Shh, I could borrow money for that um, the bank will do that they will borrow uh, you money or to buy a vehicle um, or I could um, set up some kind of leasing uh, thing uh, I'm, I'm not very familiar with that but that's possible too um, and uh, or I could pay cash uh, and I ended up choosing paying cash and, 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 and not borrowing because um, yeah, I really like the idea that it's a good, um, well, if I, my investments go bad, I have something to sell. Um, whereas if you have borrowed money uh, to buy it, well, you know, if you are uh, short on money, well, you can't sell the car because you have to pay back the bank. So you can sell it, but you won't get any money from it because the money goes to the bank for the most part. And um, uh, of course, the, uh, there are always costs um, when you borrow, you pay interests for that. Um, and the way uh, a loan is set up is that um, uh, it's really not um, fair. Um, the first payments are all interest payments so and only at the end you start really paying off the capital that you borrowed which means that if you pay off the loan at the start you still like after a couple of years or after one year or two years you want to pay off the, the loan in lump sum well you still have to pay a lot of uh, capital mm, I think I think um, I'm not sure about that. I don't know that, uh, but um, there's another advantage of, of of owning the car fully yourself is uh, you have something to liquidate, but also you can lower your expenses for insurance because you don't really need to insure it so well because well it's only your own money that you lose if something happens. So I don't have an Omnium insurance because. Um, because I don't want to pay for um, because um, insurance is always more expensive than insuring yourself um, but looking back on that decision that wasn't wise because I ended up driving a lot of kilometers with the car and also doing a lot of stupid stuff uh, which means that my actual costs in damages have been 3,000, uh, 5,000 plus 5 is about 11,000 uh, in the first year and 25,000 kilometers. Uh, so if I would have had insurance, Omnium insurance, I could have probably recovered uh, a piece of that from it. But then of course your rates go up too. So in the long term, you end up paying back. But for insurance, for me, for example, I, I pay 800 euro for a basic insurance now. If I would take Omnium insurance, it would have been not 800 euro but 2000 euro per year i think these rates are quite cheap um considering i, I made uh, about 11000 euro in, in damages of course i would have made a profit by having omnium insurance instead of normal insurance but uh full coverage insurance versus basic insurance basic insurance means that um, if others damage your car uh you will have to pay it yourself but if you crash into someone and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's your fault or not your fault your insurer will pay the other party but not your own car um, whereas if it's omnium uh, full, full coverage even if it's your fault you will get uh, payment for your own car too um, but yeah um, so it depends on how many kilometers you drive whether um, it's interesting to have a full coverage or not. If you don't drive a lot and you're very careful with the car, it's almost always standing in the garage, like I'm planning to do coming here, 
then uh, then it's much better to just and you can you have paid it cash it's much more interesting to have uh, just a basic insurance the one that's uh, obligated but nothing more um, but of course it also depends on how much capital you have if almost all your capital is in the car then uh, you do have to have uh, omnium insurance um, so it's also important I think to only buy these things when it's not a, that big of a part of your capital so that worst case if you lose it you're not like uh, becoming homeless uh, or, uh, or or you can still recover from that um, so because theft for example is also not uh, insured eh? uh, if you don't have full coverage so there are risks there um, um, but certain uh, insurance will cover certain things like it's it's parked in the garage in the building so if there is a, a flood there or, or, or a fire my normal house insurance will cover that too will cover the car too um, so yeah um, but yeah I, I, I think um, cars if it's it's smart to have your car expenses be only a small part of your capital and, 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 and to own it as an asset that way you can if things go badly with your investments or with your capital you have something to liquidate so you have an asset instead of a liability I think that's a very good I'm very happy to have made that decision because the past year actually my uh, my investments have gone down imagine I would have borrowed uh, again uh, the money then um, I would likely have to really sell it today instead I can keep it not drive it and then well the value will go down because I discovered actually that um, I, uh, the prices of uh, these cars have gone up in Europe the past year but actually in the US they have continued to drop and pretty hard um, the, like uh, another 10% mm. and, and here they went up with 10% but uh, that's so you see that's really the currency markets um, playing here for the most part the US dollar went up in value uh, and that's why basically the, the, US, the euro went down in value and so the, the, in Europe the cars have gone up a bit but it's because the euro dropped in value in real purchasing power didn't go up uh, really but the cars in the US did go down a lot in real U, U purchasing power because they dropped versus the US dollar and the US dollar dropped as well so indeed these Gallardos are still in a bear market a strong bear market uh, I mean will probably continue to drop for another five to ten years and um, and just like for example Ferrari uh, 358 GT or another car I was looking at these cars you can buy for um, they are like not 10 years old but 20 years old and these cars have continued to go down um, and could be can be bought for 30 40 thousand US dollars today whereas Gallardo is double but yeah the Ferrari is double as old but uh, these are mass production cars oh, they are Lamborghinis the Ferraris but they, they are um, the big big production numbers eh? So only the top of the line of these cars, like at the same period Ferrari was producing Testarossa, that was the m most expensive car uh, of their uh, line and these cars have found a bottom in price and have since started rising I think, I don't know, I'm not for sure, but the, the top of the line are much more rare and they uh, uh, there is a, a good possibility that after 20, 20 years going down they or they might go up for a couple of years um, and double or triple your money as just happened with the Lamborghini Diablo but the Diablo was also a very rare car the top of the line so if you buy a Murcielago or a um, Aventador in 10 20 years time Aventador probably 20 30 years time you have a, a chance to that you buy at the bottom and it goes up but the mass production cars uh, much less uh, chance for that I think uh, uh, so yeah mm, I, 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 so I, I was lucky this year to have my money not in the euro but in a Lamborghini uh, because the Lamborghini dropped less than the euro but uh, that will not uh, continue of course in the long run these supercars 
they go down every year versus even fiat like the US dollar or the euro. So I have to take that into account. Keeping this car uh, will, uh, will not only cost me in just basic expenses to keep it on the road and have insurance, but also every year you lose about 10% on the purchasing power on the value of that car. So currently it's valued 80,000 euro, it means next year I will lose 8,000 euro just in in, uh, in depreciation, just standing there. So that's an expense too. So even though it's an asset, it's depreciating assets, it's not like real estate or stocks that in the long term go up with the inflation rate of about 5%, not so with these cars. Eh? So it's, um, but then still, um, all this is also valid if you borrow money against it, it doesn't matter. Um, well, it does, it depends on the interest rate uh, for a car, but that's also about 5%, I think. So it's not like you make profit there. The interest rate is about the same as a real inflation. I think, actually, I don't know the rates. I could be totally wrong because the rates on real estate are a lot lower. I think it's 2% these days, which is a lot lower than real inflation. So. Borrowing then it can be interesting, but um, then also it depends on the housing prices. They can be a lot higher than what it um, should be realistically. So anyways, I'm losing track, but um, yeah, uh, that's how I did it. There are other ways to finance such cars. Uh, it can be interesting to borrow. It can be interesting to lease, especially if it's new cars, mm, but um, for my situation, that was the most interesting. Thanks, bye. Yeah, there is one thing I forgot to mention about uh, buying the Lamborghini. Of course, this, um, if you pay cash, um, is uh, you the opportunity cost. Uh, that was, of course, something I also had to consider. If I put my money in a Lambo, I can't invest it. Uh, and a Lambo, for sure, has no returns. So it makes sense to borrow money from that perspective and because and and instead of putting my own money in that uh, car um, putting my own money in investments I have at least a chance to go up so because the bank will not borrow you money to invest uh, but they will borrow you money uh, uh, to uh, for a car or a house eh? so from that perspective it's interesting but for me, um, I already invest, uh, well, my, my, my complete portfolio is invested in assets that have the potential to go up. Um, it's always good to have some uh, cash um, just for opportunities uh, that may strike all uh, my investments can go down in value and even though the chance is low they can all go down at the same time in which case cash will actually be the best investment uh, as it still has about the same value as it has gone down the least um, I mean not at all uh, or in purchasing power the least and a Lambo goes down in purchasing power but it's go down a lot less than uh, I mean then other investments can go down um, so uh, especially for me when I invest in cryptocurrency so it's extremely volatile uh, I can lose 90% uh, uh, on investments uh, a Lambo will not go down 90% it will lose every year pretty predictably about 10% but not more um, so, 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 I'm losing opportunity. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not really you uh, paying the loss of opportunity by putting a part of my capital in a Lambo because I need cash anyway. So, and and a lump, and if worst case, I have such a situation where my investments all together go down a lot. I can sell the Lambo uh, and uh, and invest that money. Um, so, 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 I think all these things point out that the best way to buy such a car or just to buy anything, I think, is when you can afford it, really afford it. 
because then you can actually buy it the cheapest way as well. When you cannot really afford it, you don't have enough cash, you don't have, uh, then you end up having to borrow. Sometimes borrowing is interesting. If, for example, you need a car to get that job, yeah, then it may be a good investment to borrow the money to get the job. But in general, it's best, I think, to buy stuff, anything, um, when you, after you have saved for it and you can really afford it. Mm. Uh, and, 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 and still then it's hard uh, as for me I could really afford this car last year but this year uh, not really uh, so it's uh, it's a toss-up but that's only because if I wouldn't have had a real uh, decent margin uh, and I, I couldn't really afford it last year then now I would have had to sell it and buying selling something always uh, you have a huge loss in transaction cost 10-20% uh, you lose just on doing a transaction so um, so so that's why it's wise to have always a buffer and spend a lot less than, can, than you can really afford I think very few people do that they are very quickly uh, spending money on beautiful toys that they uh, can't really afford uh, so voila that's it bye